So let's discuss Luca, which if you go on Google takes you to this, but um, that's not the Luca we're looking for. In this case, we're going to be discussing the last universal common ancestor, which is essentially a concept in evolutionary biology that refers to some kind of an organism that pretty much everything on Earth came from. The organism that most likely began it all. So essentially the ancestor of all animals, all plants, all bacteria, and of course all archaea. And extremely recently there's actually been a new study that used an extremely thorough genetic analysis to learn a little bit more about this unusual organism and to essentially find out when it most likely lived and what it most likely ate. And so, hello info person, this is Anton, let's discuss this new study about Luca and find out what the scientists discovered. But I guess first, a brief clarification. When it comes to animal life, today we think it's most likely an organism referred to as Ormetazoan, the last common ancestor of all animals. We actually have no idea what it might have looked like, but some scientists believe it might have been something similar to this. And this very likely existed over 600 million years ago. It was very likely a tiny tiny organism that eventually resulted in all animals. But in order to discover the common ancestor of all life, we're going to have to go back in time a few billion years ago. And so over the past few decades, several studies came out trying to figure out what this Luca might have been like. Here's actually one of the older papers, and I guess one of the more popular ones, that you can find in the description. And so in a lot of previous studies, scientists like Madeleine Weiss were able to analyze millions of different genes and hundreds of thousands of different protein clusters in order to figure out some of the potential genes that might have been in common and to then trace back their origin. And well, back then, the scientists have already established that this organism very likely had a lipid bilayer, essentially very similar to all common life and all of the cells inside our body, and it most likely used DNA and of course RNA to create proteins. And it most likely already possessed a lot of other cellular machinery used in cells today. For example, things like ribosomes that are used to create proteins. And according to those earlier studies, it potentially lived in oxygen-free environments and use some kind of a CO2 fixing and maybe nitrogen fixing, while basically being dependent on hydrogen and residing very close to hydrothermal vents. Geochemically active and environmentally rich environments that essentially provided it with everything – CO2, hydrogen, even iron – that it potentially used to create various proteins. But in these earlier studies, some of this was basically just assumptions without any concrete evidence. There was maybe just a little bit too uncertain about its actual biochemical mechanisms and about its metabolism and what exactly it survived on. And naturally, trying to answer these questions is really important not just to understand the origins of life, but basically to understand how life began on Earth and what sort of a planet could have even started this kind of life, or in other words, what planets we should be looking for if we want to find alien life somewhere out there. And so in order to try to figure out some of these additional questions, this recent study tried to focus on even more universal properties of modern life in order to figure out what Luca might have been like. For example, one question we actually have no answer to is what about viruses? Did viruses come before Luca or after Luca? And if they came after Luca, were they actually responsible for the sudden explosion of evolution and are they actually the reason why a lot of super complex life eventually evolved? But if they start before Luca, then it's actually not clear what viruses came from. But I guess this particular topic we'll discuss in some of the future videos. Um, subscribe and stuff. But essentially we're going to be discussing this. The most recent study from July of 2024 that conducted the most complex and I guess the most ridiculous genetic analysis creating a ridiculously complex and an extremely large tree of life, or technically genetic tree, in order to find out which genes potentially came from Luca and thus figure out what kind of an organism this really was. And naturally a lot of this is kind of challenging. First of all because we actually have no fossils of any of this, and second of all because the scientists in this case have to use a lot of modern bacteria and modern archaea and then try to analyze their genetic code looking for various similarities and looking for potential genes that could have been in existence for billions of years. And the important side note here is that Luca was not actually the first organism. It was not the first form of life. Something definitely existed before this organism and something else might have also been not the last but the first universal common ancestor, which I guess we can call uh, Fuca. And so quite a lot of life definitely existed way before Luca 
possibly for hundreds of millions of years. But only one organism seemed to have then led to the evolution of everything. And so essentially here the researchers conducted a very thorough search of approximately 700 genomes from 350 archaea and 350 bacteria. And in this case they did not use eukaryotes or I guess us, mostly because today we know eukaryotic cells very likely evolved much more recently from possibly a combination of bacteria and maybe archaea. And in order to then sort all of these genes into some kind of a family, they relied on a database you see right here, Kyoto Encyclopedia of Genes and Genomes. Free to use, free to access, should be in the description below. And the point of all of this was to basically figure out various metabolic pathways that a lot of this early life potentially had. So in other words, did they actually rely on carbon and nitrogen or did they use something else in order to survive? And so that's what you're looking at here. This is the image of metabolic pathways inferred to be present in LUCA from approximately 700 genomes of modern bacteria and modern archaea. And here they were also able to identify 57 specific genes that seem to be common to all of these 700 organisms and are potentially present in all life. That of course includes us. In this case these genes have not changed over 3.5 to possibly 4 billion years and were most likely present in LUCA. And so this analysis allowed the scientists to work out what sort of a metabolism LUCA probably possessed. And well it turns out that LUCA was potentially not that different from modern prokaryotes and archaea, with the only difference being a slightly smaller genome. And while importantly, there were no signs of photosynthesis or nitrogen fixation, something that a lot of modern bacteria do use. But its genome that potentially contained approximately 2.5 million bases encoding about 2600 proteins, potentially allowed this organism to become what's known as an acetogen. In essence, it basically lived in anaerobic or oxygen-free conditions and then used CO2 and hydrogen to produce acetates, an important nutrient for a lot of different additional microbes that we actually find in a lot of different insects such as for example termites. And interestingly, modern archaea and modern bacteria very often actually live with acetogens, creating a very diverse niche where a lot of different molecules and a lot of really complex nutrients are then generated for basically everyone else. And so here the scientists also believe that LUCA, based on its metabolism, was probably part of a much larger niche and a much larger microbial community where hydrogen was constantly recycled and other microbes might have used additional atmospheric photochemistry in order to produce a kind of a first productive ecosystem. In other words, LUCA was unlikely to be a kind of a solo organism. It most likely relied on a lot of other microbes and was extremely likely a part of a much larger community. But in the end was probably the only survivor. Or I guess the most successful survivor. And more intriguingly, there are even signs of some kind of an early immune system supposedly to fight viral infections. And that of course implies that viruses very likely came before LUCA and were already established in various niches, causing all sorts of mutations. And so the signs of this immune system in LUCA definitely suggest viruses were much much older. Intriguingly, its immune system is based on what's known as CRISPR, which as you might know already, in the last decade or so has been essentially perfected to now modify any gene anywhere. So this is a kind of a present from bacteria that the scientists discovered a while back, realizing they can actually use this for genetic modification. So most of the GMO stuff that we have today, the result of the CRISPR gene editing, seems to have already existed in these super ancient organisms. But the question is of course, when did they actually exist? How old is LUCA? And in this case, by using a statistical analysis of genetic drift, genetic modification, and combining the tree of life they created for the study, researchers were able to analyze this molecular clock, establishing a potential minimal age for LUCA. Here they actually relied on something known as paralogous genes, and so by using these gene copies, they worked out that LUCA most likely existed 4.2 billion years ago. So basically, 300 million years after the formation of the planet. It means that life on Earth most likely started super quickly, evolving rapidly within just a few million years as soon as Earth cooled down and acquired a deep enough ocean. And because Luke in this case was definitely part of a larger niche and resided with other microorganisms, these types of established communities suggest that life started on Earth pretty much almost right away. But naturally, as we discover more and more bacteria and archaea and analyze more and more genes, 
The evolutionary models for all of this will most likely improve as well, and we will definitely get even more information about Luca in possibly the next 5 years. The last paper about Luca was about 5 years ago, and so assuming the same progress, we might get even more detail by 2030. But when it comes to trying to figure out what kind of Earth all of this began on, that's maybe not the question we can answer yet. At this point, we still are not entirely sure what kind of an Earth this was and what sort of atmosphere, minerals and geology it contained in order to help life begin and in order to help Luca eventually evolve into us. And so in that sense, these are great studies, but when it comes to geology, we're still not entirely sure what kind of a planet we should be looking for in order to find something extremely similar to planet Earth. And so on that note, once we have some more additional information, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.